Well, too much further on, but you know, uh, I've got these all these bolts here, so I'm actually at the point where I'm going to be starting taking it off, but it's getting a bit late now, so I'm going to bother. This is um, under here. That's an oil drainer, and this one is the coolant. It was quite strange actually <laughs> that I found those out, but there you go. Let me see. I've had a little bit of a spill. Um. Yeah, um, odd things to note. Okay, so those are the uh, the coolants. This is for MG1 coolant. That's MG2 coolant. You've got like a joint, so it goes through them. This is where the HT and I guess the sensor circuits for the um, MG1 are. I've got them out. There they are. That's what's connected in. Okay, MG2, it, it looks like you have to actually take the back panel off in order to get to that. It's not a separate panel. So I can't remove them yet, which is a bit curious. Hey ho, um, yeah, that's about it really. I mean, some of these bolts are really quite stiff to get out. I mean, I'm lucky because I actually have a compressed air wrench, so that means I can get around them reasonably quickly. But uh, yeah, it's going, you know, we're doing. It'll probably be tomorrow when this comes apart. It's drained of all fluids. The oil's out and the water's out, and uh, it's ready to be lifted off. There's a, an interesting thing here that, uh, where is it, out there, you can see, I don't know if you can see, uh, so we can get a light on it, reflect it this way, you might be able to see, but that, there's like a join there in the, uh, in the sterities, you can just see the edge just there, if I can point to it, oh there we go, there, and there's another one on the other side as well, which, if I can get the reflection right, you might be able to, yeah, there it is, see, there, and there. Which means this <coughs> thing around the outside is like a massive circlip. So you should be able to basically take that off. I don't know how it's going to work though, because uh, I don't know what you're taking off. But hey, this here most definitely houses MG1. In this, this cast housing here, that's MG1. And where it separates is actually where the gearbox is, which is a you know planetary gear set and uh, yeah and there's a shaft that goes through there's an oil pump underneath there which is actually sat on and the shaft goes through to the uh, actually I think it must engage with the rotary of the uh, planetary set which is connected to the engine which is that shaft there uh, so the engine actually pumps the oil through so you have to have the engine running in order to get the oil going it seems not sure about that. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, it's out. You know, I've got it on a <laughs> makeshift little table. And uh, yeah, it's quite strange actually because that's it. That's the whole motor system. And it's obviously considerably smaller than the, the engine. You see. Um, what's the power equivalence then? So we're talking the engine is a 1500cc engine. But it's not a auto cycle, which is what a standard car is. Like, for instance, that one would have been. Uh -huh. um, it's an Atkinson cycle. It's not really an Atkinson cycle. They say it's an Atkinson cycle, but it's actually like an Atkinson Muller cycle, where basically it uses um, partial compression of another cylinder to uh, augment the compression of the one that you're uh, intaking, I think. It's something to do with. It keeps the compression system open slightly so that it pushes air out so you don't have as much... It's more efficient, it's more efficient engine, but you, it's not as powerful. Auto cycle engines are more powerful, as they are more powerful than diesel engines as well. So, yeah, so that means that it's not the same power of the equivalent 1500 as you would expect. Auto cycle is a common one. Uh, it's about equivalent of a 1300 in power. A 1300 power is going to be, I don't know, about sort of 65 horsepower, around about the 60 to 70 horsepower business, I would say. Something like that. So that's 60 to 70 horsepower, which is the equivalent of uh, about uh, 40 to 50 kilowatts uh, in total. Inside there, I believe there are two motors. One's 30 kilowatts, and the other one's about 10 somewhere it's about 10 12 something like that 
which means you have 42 kilowatts, roughly 42, I'll say 42 kilowatts, in there. Plus a gearbox, of course. There's actually a gearbox inside there. So it's got motors and gearbox. And that is actually about half the size of the engine and roughly equivalent power. It's quite strange, isn't it, when you think about it? This is the reason why electric's going to really, really go once it gets going. Because if you think about it the other way, that engine, right, is say 60 to 70, it's about 50 kilowatts, let's say it's 50 kilowatts, right? Now that engine, let's get a good shot of it because you can't see it, can you? No, you still can't see it. Right, the size of that engine, right, for one of those, right, you can have two of those. You see, and that, that still needs a gearbox, whereas that obviously has one built in, right? So really, you're talking about much less, actually. I mean, that's the final, that's the diff there. So, that machine there is about the same amount of power as that, plus a gearbox. <laughs> so we're talking about, I don't know, we're really talking about sort of three times, aren't we? The size is uh, for a petrol engine, as it is for a... Uh, Mind you, that's, that's not fair, because that's actually an Atkinson Muller cycle engine. The equivalent Otto cycle engine would have been more like, sort of, I don't know, 60, maybe 70 kilowatts. So, a 2 to 1 ratio, I would have said, is fair. So that means, basically, that you can take a car like that, okay, so that's like an average saloon car, I mean, a factory, it's a Prius, is relevant. You could even say, okay, it's an Aventis, because that's what it's based on, okay. And Avensis is, I think you can get a 2 litre, perhaps, I think 2 litre is the biggest engine you can get, which would be, I don't know, about 100 and, say, 120 horsepower, about 100 kilowatts, okay? 100 kilowatts, right? But if you actually had an electric engine in there instead, in a standard car, right, the size of underneath the bonnet means you could have a 200 kilowatts, or about, you know, 250 horsepower. And it's the same size, physically. There's a lot more power in there, and the power curve's a lot different as well, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, I mean, look at that. That is the same, that, that is the same as a standard, sort of, I don't know, 1200 engine and gearbox. And we actually have one of those. There we go. <laughs> this is a 1200 engine and gearbox, right? Look, there you go, you've got all the size there. There's a gearbox on the end. Okay, and it's obviously taken apart. We've got bits missing off it because I'm in the middle of... Oh, you can't see it. There's the head. And there's the body. And look at all that machinery there, right? Right, that's 1,200. So that's about 50 kilowatts. 40 to 50 kilowatts, right? And that, just that on its own, is the same power. And that includes the gearbox and the final drive. Okay? <laughs> Which means you could chuck that... You can chuck that in the boot of a car. Do you know what I mean? That, and that's where it's going to go. In that, it's going to go in the back. Okay. And so you could put that in the back of a car. And you've got loads of space in the car after that. And it's quiet. It doesn't have to be quiet, but it can be. Okay. So, you know, let's get it. Let's do 